Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel. I wanted to give an opportunity today to learn a little bit about how to test an unun before you deploy it in a real world scenario. So before you throw it up in a tree or put it on a roof, maybe you want to test to make sure the unun you build is actually functioning correctly. And to do that, it's really simple. We have, and this is going to be for an example, I did not build this one, but we have a just build nine to one unun. And if we want to test it, what we're going to do is get some resistors. But first, a little bit of math. 50 ohms is a typical impedance value that we're looking for when we're operating radio. Our radio likes to see 50 ohms. A 9 to 1 unun does just that. So you have 9 to 1 or something to 50. So if you take these numbers here, it turns out to be 450 to 1, which comes down to 9 to 1. So if we have 450 ohm resistors or worth of resistors, we could actually test this device right here. The same logic would apply with like a 49 to one. You would want 2450 ohms worth of resistors. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna jump them in between this post and this post or your antenna post and what could be your counterpoise post. So let's go ahead and since this is a nine to one, we're gonna get 50, 450 ohms worth of resistors in line here. And for this, I'm gonna show you how to test a resistor just in case you weren't aware. Now I have this resistor and I happen to know it's a 150 ohms. For some reason, my 200 uh, ohm section doesn't work here. So I'm gonna leave it on 2K. And what's gonna happen here is when I test this by holding uh, one prong on one side of the resistor and one on the other, I'm gonna see a number. It says 0 0.150. Well, it's actually 150 because I'm on the 2000 spot. So that's correct. And this one's gonna show probably the same thing. 0.151, pretty close, 150. And then the same thing here. Well, that and math should add up to 150, 150 is 300 plus 150 is 450. For this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to twist these together. It's probably not the best thing to do if you want a permanent solution or if you're gonna be doing this often, maybe you would solder them together and then put some nice heat shrink over them. Now, when I run these resistors in parallel or excuse me, in line with each other, I'm pretty close to 450 ohms. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and just connect one end on this post here and wrap one end around here to this post and make sure they're touching really well. Again, it would be, if you had like a spade connector, it would be wise to do weatherproofing and spade connectors at the end. I think it would make for like a perfect little jumper. But essentially what this is gonna do now is gonna create a loop and it's gonna see 50 ohms. Let's take a look real quick though, make sure everything's all right. We still have the 450 ohms in line. Uh, and then we have a coax now plugged in, which you didn't see before. And that coaxial cable actually goes into an antenna analyzer, and I'll do my best to make sure that you could see it okay. Uh, I wanna show you what I did here to test everything. I went to the standing wave ratio on my antenna analyzer, and I scanned the range of 3.8 megahertz up to 30 megahertz for this example. And when I did that, I have standing wave ratio values of kind of high around 80 meters and it continues up and it goes lower toward 10 meters. And at 10 meters, it's pretty much somewhere around one to one or I thought it was. Regardless, there's nothing on here that uh, it can't be tuned by a tuner. So these are all acceptable uh, standing wave ratios, if you will. Uh, now what's going to happen is, you know, you're probably somewhere close, but just for fun, you check your impedance value. And what I'm going to do here is go to impedance and, uh, here we go. 48 ohms in the middle. Not too bad. Uh, I'm right at 66 ohms at 30 megahertz, which is a little high. I actually suspect it's probably partially to do with this connector here. Um, but you could see here that I am maintaining a relatively uh, close to 50 ohm standing wave ratio. Nothing a tuner couldn't handle, by the way, uh, because sometimes, you know, nine to ones, most times nine to ones need some kind of tuner for all the bands that you want to work. What were to happen if I were to take this back out just so you could see the example? Well, now that I take it out, look at my impedance levels go just all over the place, right? For example, uh, 13 megahertz or 12.94 megahertz, I'm at 518 ohms. Uh, that's kind of high. And then if I was to go to standing wave ratio, 141 to one. So you could see what the 450 ohms did. Uh, and we, we suspect now that this works. And realistically, I know somebody's going to say, well, why do you test it when you have everything together? Why not test it before it all goes together? And the answer is, is you, you could. Um, so if you had like a nine to one laying around, or you just build a nine to one before you put the the connectors on here and everything, you, you could in theory, you know, jump the 450 ohms here 
and then pipe into the the line that's going to go to your SL239 and get a reading. And that way, if you're low or high, you could adjust or add. You can count your ratio, make sure it's correct. You could see if there's anything that intersects or overlaps each other, which could all affect your overall impedance values with a 9 to 1. I'm going to recap everything and bring up one more cool point. Okay, so uh, this is a 9 to 1, but we could do this with a 49 to 1. We could do this to a 4 to 1 and any other kind of combination, as long as we multiply this value by 50, 450, and so forth on down the line, uh, 200 ohms, and whatever this one was, 24 or something, doesn't matter. Uh, but remember, you're going to go ahead and in line is going to be your resistors from the antenna to the counterpoise section. And this is very beneficial, and this is what I want to tell you. The reason it's so beneficial is... Now let's say I get out to wherever I'm setting this up and I run, you know, my antenna, which is on this side, and I run my counterpoise, which is on this side, and something's not right. Now I know I'm probably going to have to lengthen or shorten something, most likely a combination of both. But, uh, for example, I know that the 9 to 1 has certain lengths that it likes to see and certain lengths that it just doesn't vibe with. Uh, 30, 36 feet being a length it likes, I think. Uh, 44 feet, I believe. Um, I'll leave a link below with all that information. But now you know that this is working and you can focus on this when you are going to set everything up. So I hope this helps you. A little bit of a visual aid, a little bit of kind of what I do. And don't forget, if you have something that you think would be a little bit better, I'm by no means an expert. I just enjoy what I'm doing and I hope you all have a good time. Let me know in the comments below how to do it better and uh, I'd appreciate it. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, 73.